The Machi Lab is the most creative way of empowering women of all of the projects which the UN funds around the world. This is the one dearest to our heart. It's the one we're most proud of, and it's the one that we intend to take to the rest of the world so that they can learn from what you have achieved. The one critical way to survive in a changing environment is to make sure that you have the skills to survive in a changing environment. So we need to either continuously update our skills or acquire new skills to survive in this kind of an environment. We are a multidisciplinary group of close to 100 people. We have engineers, artists, artisans, videographers, social scientists, field workers, volunteers, and exchange students from around the globe, and all working to understand India's complex social problems and together build solutions. With vocational skills training, there's a huge component that you have to do with your hands. So how do you teach something with your hands by using technology? Our methodology is the CWIT methodology. It stands for Computerized Vocational Education and Training. It's a blended learning approach for vocational and life skills. Till date, we have developed over 15 vocational courses and 20 life skills courses. And we have used it to train rural women and children across 21 states of India. You can't throw technology at difficult social situations and expect it to get better. You have to take it there. You have to work very sensitively to see how it's going to fit into people's lives. They spend their time in the villages along with our end users to really understand their issues from a place of empathy and of connection. Our vision of gender equality is inspired by our Chancellor's words. Women and men are of equal value, like two wings of a bird, for without the two in perfect harmony, humanity cannot progress. We hold India's only UNESCO chair in the area of gender equality and women's empowerment. Our research goal is to further women's empowerment and gender equality as a community agenda in harmony with the environment towards a sustainable future. While addressing problems in villages, we work with women to identify what vulnerabilities they have and co-design interventions with them. One of which we're really proud of is addressing the need for toilets. We taught women to build and maintain their own toilets. And after they mastered these skills, they mobilized the community towards ending open defecation. Some now earn a living by building toilets for others in the village. It's a win-win situation. It's a community-led total sanitation approach. Some of our women leaders were even honored by the President of India for their efforts towards ending open defecation. This was a huge achievement and a source of inspiration for all. You have made the work of the women's work of the women's work. It's a very human resource development and skill development. बहने और बेटियां स्वच्छता की दूध तो पहले से ही थी अब आपने स्किल और सशक्तिकरण को भी इससे जोड़ा है We integrate life skills throughout our training programs to us it is as important if not more than vocational skills these trainings strengthen the socio democratic voice and economic empowerment of women it expands the collective empowerment space of women
We have had a lot of firsts. We have trained India's first women plumbers. We have built the first haptic simulator in the country. We have had tribal women launch Kickstarter campaigns to fund their businesses. All this could not have happened were it not for the guidance, the vision, and the opportunity given by our Chancellor Sri Mata Amrita Nanda Mani Devi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, welcome to day two of the Global Summit of UNESCO Gender-Related Chairs and Networks, W36, or actually W37, <clears throat> as we found out yesterday. It will be my pleasure to moderate today's uh, sessions. We have a very interesting and concrete agenda that we wish to share with you. But before going further in terms of explaining the program of today, I would like to give the word to Dr. Bhavani for our initial prayer. Thank you so much. Um, wonderful to see you back again today. And let uh, if we can start today also like we always start uh, in India with uh, a prayer. So if we can just welcome you to join me for just a moment of silence in prayer. Thank you. Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Dhyayamo Dhavalava Gunthanavati Tejo Mai Naishthiki Snigdha Panga Vilokini Bhagavati Vanta Smita Shri Mukhi Vatsalyam Vratavarshini Sumadhura Sankirtana Lapini Syamangi Madhusikta Sukhtim Amrita Nandat Mekameshwari Thank you, Thank, so you so much. Much. You. Uh, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So my name is Joost Monks. I work with the University of Geneva and I'm a long-standing friend, admirer and supporter of Amrita University. I'm very privileged to, to join you today to, to moderate the session together with the colleagues. Uh, I got a very clear instruction saying we have to stay on time. Uh, so uh, I will try to, to keep time, as they say, time boxing as we go. Uh, we have, a, as said, a very interesting program to share with you again, building on uh, the various things and the very amazing overview we got from 13 UNESCO chairs yesterday, uh, covering very diverse areas and spanning the globe, basically, with one common element, and that is to strive, to fight, to work towards gender equality and women empowerment. We're also very happy to, to welcome actually the latest, the, the newest, the 37th chair with Haiti yesterday, which was, which was a privilege and an honor for us. Uh, the various uh, comments, remarks, the various presentations that we've seen, and there was a very rich diversity there, uh, resonates very strongly uh, with the ambition of this conference. Um, of trying to promote uh, collaboration, cross-fertilization across the various chairs in the world. And I wish to congratulate you again, Dr. Tarek and the team in particular for endorsing the declaration, uh, last element of yesterday's program, which I think really lay out the, the cornerstone for the house that we're trying to build. And as stressed by Jamila Saftayou, uh, the Director of Gender Equality at UNESCO in Paris, uh, impact orientation will be critical. So this is very high on our agenda and we will try to work towards 
not only creating impact, but also being able to show it. So given the very rich discussions we had yesterday, there is a small uh, bit, so to speak, still left. So today's program, we will start with round three uh, of the UNESCO chair presentations, uh, and then also opening the floor for some discussion. Uh, it's good to, that we have the opportunity to, to exchange, ask questions, provide comments uh, on the various presentations that we maybe heard yesterday, but that we will also hear today. Then the second part of today will um, be organized in two parallel sessions. So the group will be divided, or you can choose. I'll tell a bit more, more about that later, uh, in which there will be a number of presentations with concrete actions, research uh, projects, case studies, which will probably, and I think I'm very hopeful here, identify areas where we can really join hands together and try to work towards common objectives. Um, after these two uh, parallel sessions, and in each of these sessions, there will be two, uh, two runs, um, followed by questions and answers every time, we'll convene together again in the main hall, so to speak, first to share what we have learned from the parallel sessions, but also to listen uh, to Dr. Tarek and Dr. Bavani uh, in terms of concluding uh, remarks and possible ways forward. So that I will tell you a little bit more also about the technical dimension of the breakout rooms uh, when we get there. But before that, and as announced, and without further ado, I would like to um, start the second or the third part, sorry, of the, of the chair presentations. Um, and according to my information, uh, and I think that needs to be confirmed, um, the speaker from Spain will be first. Um, but I'm not sure whether Dr. Ines Sanchez de Madaragia is, is with us or Ines Novel Abril. Okay, so I hear she is uh, delayed. Um, so in that case, I would like to ask the team to play the videos uh, we received from our Turkish colleagues uh, Dr. Oder Bertil Emra, UNESCO Chair on Gender Equality and Sustainable Development in Turkey. Uh, I think there's uh, some short videos that were shared with us uh, to share with you. Can I ask the technical team to put that on? Thank you so much. Dear colleagues, dear UNESCO Chairholders, on behalf of Koch University UNESCO Chair on Gender Equality and Sustainable Development, I extend my warmest regards to all of you from Istanbul. My name is Bertil Emre Oder. I'm a professor of constitutional law with a focus on human rights, judicial review, and constitutional theory. Our UNESCO Chair has been established in 2016 uh, as the leading gender equality research hub in Turkey. At present, uh, we serve as an inclusive and interdisciplinary platform in close collaboration with our Center on Gender Studies. In this respect, uh, the chair uh, gathers researchers from different generations, including graduate, uh, postgraduate, and established uh, scholars. It also uh, covers a wide network of researchers uh, ranging from humanities and social sciences to health sciences, uh, embracing qualitative, quantitative, and interdisciplinary studies of gender equality. Uh, within the scope of our uh, PhD research uh, programs in the field of social science and humanities, uh, women's studies are also supported under the UNESCO chair on gender equality and sustainable development. Considering uh, priorities of concern in the global settings and uh, Turkey uh, regarding gender inequalities uh, and uh, our capacity and expertise, the UNESCO chair has put forward four areas of interest uh, to conduct the gender studies as well as uh, public engagement uh, agenda for sustainable development goals. Uh, these are violence against women, uh, women employment, political participation, and women in engineering and health sciences. 
Uh, in respect of uh, our publications and conferences, we have a very strong focus on women and constitutionalism, women and citizenship, uh, women and employment, and women's movements. Uh, as regards uh, policy-oriented uh, research and public impact, the chair collaborates with uh, national, regional, and international stakeholders, such as the UN Women, uh, the UNESCO National Committee, municipalities, and bar associations. Uh, we provide legislative monitoring projects uh, and develop gender mainstreaming programs uh, for companies uh, to implement the gender impact analysis in the decision-making uh, process. Fostering uh, international collaboration uh, in the field of sustainable development goals, uh, in line with, uh, with generation equality, we have uh, developed different types of programs for young uh, professionals. In these programs, we contribute uh, to the promotion of global feminist advocacy and women's advancement. Our uh, UNESCO Summer School on Women's Empowerment and Sustainable Development, uh, organized in 2019, is regarded uh, as a good practice at the global level. Here I conclude my words uh, and kindly invite you to the video of this collaborative event with the hope of a face-to-face -face meeting very soon. Thank you so much. Uh, this year we have organized the UNESCO Summer Academy around the topic of women's empowerment and sustainable uh, development and the academy is uh, a knowledge uh, building for realization of gender equality and it has been designed for the young professionals coming from different backgrounds. My point was basically to clarify that gender equality uh, needs to be always kept in mind and uh, needs to be related to the foundations set by these human rights instruments and not by only economic empowerment. The topic of my presentation is on political participation and what the drivers of change are. So really looking at the things that women in the room can take home to their own countries and into their own research and to their own practice to get more women involved in politics. What we know from the research makes a difference. I wanted to talk about the interlinkages between sustainable development, gender equality and education. Uh, for UNESCO, uh, Sustainable Development Goals number four and five, education and in, uh, gender equality, are inextricably linked. Uh, both of them have also cut across all other 17 sustainable development goals. So this gave me a chance to talk a little bit about uh, UNESCO programs uh, that promote uh, gender equality as well as uh, gender equality in and through education. I was here today to talk about uh, British approaches to gender and international development uh, and how we are putting our commitment to uh, gender equality and to the empowerment of women and girls front and centre of our development programmes. It's a big commitment, we're putting a lot of money uh, towards that goal uh, and we're doing it because we think it's the right thing to do, because we think it's a smart thing to do uh, and because it's our Law, so it's our obligation as well and I was explaining all those principles uh, and how we are going about making sure we actually have our intended effect in practice around the world and what that means for what we're doing here in Turkey uh, and there were some fantastic questions from the floor which really got me thinking about what more we can be doing. I'd like to thank first of all Kochkam, Koch University and UNESCO for organizing this academy. I think this is an amazing experience that I hope that they will continue to organize. It's tackling a very important topic and putting the issue of gender equality and women's empowerment at the heart of the sustainable development agenda, but also bringing together young people from all parts of the world who are 
current and future leaders of this world who are inheriting this world from us and can teach us about what more we need to do, how to overcome the challenges, the hurdles, the walls that we are facing to make this a better world for everyone. So it's been an extreme pleasure for me to participate and I myself learned a lot. In Turkish we have an old saying and it states that if you drink a cup of coffee with a friendly person, uh, it will be remembered for 40 years. Hope uh, the memories of the UNESCO Summer Academy will be remembered for 40 years and more. Uh, I wish the best of luck to our first alumni. All right, thank you so much, colleagues, chair from, from Turkey, very impressive. I like this idea of a summer academy for women empowerment. This is something that we, we, we may want to take up as a group. I'd also like to take this opportunity to, to, to welcome in particular again, the, the chairs that were already yesterday with us, in particular from Argentina, Egypt, Greece, Kenya, and Turkey, very honored. Uh, to have you back, uh, Gloria Bodnar, in particular also as, as the chair of the network. It's so good to see you again. Um, having listened, uh, watched our uh, uh, Turkish colleagues, may I now request uh, Dr. Bavani Rao, uh, the chair um, on gender equality and women empowerment at Amrita University and also director of Amachi Labs uh, to share some of your sites, your, your, your insights and experiences, noting again uh, that you hold the, uh, the first and so far only chair on gender equality in India. So uh, without further ado, uh, Dr. Bhavani, please, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Um, I will uh, share my screen and then give a brief presentation of our work uh, uh, under the UNESCO chair. Just let me know if you can see my screen. I'm sorry, the date treats uh, 19th of uh, August is because I was supposed to give this yesterday and I didn't really have chance to change the date. So the date should read the 20th of August, 1920, uh, 2021. Uh, I, uh, as I mentioned in my talk yesterday, that uh, the vision of, uh, of uh, the, the UNESCO chair and the Center for Gender Equality uh, is uh, our chancellor's vision is like two wings of a bird, men and women are of equal value for without the two imperfect balance, humanity cannot progress. Um, if I can just take a step back, uh, uh, the chair is nested under a research center at Amrita University. Uh, Amrita University is, is one of the premier uh, private institutions in India uh, with over, I think, seven campuses right now growing uh, that offer all kinds of uh, programs, various disciplines. So um, we are in the Kerala campus and one of the Kerala campuses and uh, yeah, and the mission, I would say, for the Center for uh, Women's Empowerment and Gender Equality is that it seeks to increase women's empowerment as an e equitable approach towards achieving gender equality. So keeping very much gender equality in our mind as the final uh, target through participatory action research implementation and knowledge dissemination. So these are the three strong pillars through which we work. And so um, I will take you to my presentation of what exactly falls under implementation and social impact, knowledge creation, and uh, knowledge dissemination. I mean, some of them are easy to uh, easy enough to understand. For example, in terms of implementation, we have a lot of grassroots level projects that we do. Uh, as the presentation yesterday by Dr. Manisha, we work in 101 rural communities across 21 states in India. That number grows, it also changes uh, every once in a while. Uh, typically what we do is capacity building among rural women uh, by using ICTs. So we leverage ICTs to teach them vocational livelihoods and life skills, but we also engage them actively, for example, in sustaining the environment, cleaning up the environment. I don't know, some of you may have seen the video, some of this to uh, end open defecation, to build toilets for themselves, to clean up uh, their living spaces, uh, collective spaces uh, towards uh, uh, cleaning water bodies, 
um, things like that. So projects that are around sustainable development, but very strong involvement of women, uh, but also women in self-help groups so that they have a very strong uh, economic empowerment and vitality within the communities. So these are the typical kind of projects that we implement at the ground level. We study the impact of these projects on the rural community. The, uh, an overview of the work that we have done so far, if you look at the impact numbers, uh, number of women trained is over 6,000, number of train trainers we have trained is over 200, number of villages that we have or rural communities that we have worked in is over 60 in 19 states. The area of research has included empowerment studies, education, business management, economics, social work, and computational social sciences. Um, when we talk about knowledge creation is, is what is what is it that we are contributing to the body of knowledge? What are the new things that we are bringing to the table? This is the one I think that we are most proud of. It's something that is, uh, is, is uh, uh, a synthesis of uh, the knowledge that we have learned from our years of work, but also uh, with the guidance of Dr. Tarek is, is uh, it's, uh, strongly, it's, it uses a systems uh, uh, oriented uh, approach and that distills this knowledge into a framework which we call the awesome uh, framework which is accelerating women's empowerment through systems oriented model expansion and there are certain uh, areas of the research that we focus on that is uh, listed for example some of it includes uh, creating model curriculum or uh, adding to the body of knowledge for women's empowerment but also creating certification standards how do you assess what is the level of women's empowerment in a particular community um, the the areas that we research in typically involve of course computational social sciences like i mentioned but also social behavioral and economic sciences wash technology integration, integrated education for development, just to name a few, of course, gender empowerment studies and sustainable development studies are a no brainer in this. Uh, we have typical approaches. So when we work with a community, we tend to do it in a very holistic manner so that it is sustainable. Uh, it often involves uh, participatory approaches, but also raising awareness in the areas for creating uh, with the people uh, designs of interventions that they would like to see in their communities, uh, build the kind of curriculum that they would need to achieve what they want to do, then do training and capacity building on those, uh, uh, on what they need to learn and uh, use their, in the skills that they have acquired to basically implement projects within their communities, leading to community development, but because they have their own the development it also leads it makes sure that maintenance and sustenance actually is getting is taken care of and this ownership of uh, of the grassroots level work is basically what eventually leads to behavioral change which is probably the hardest thing to achieve and to this end we develop a lot of ict based tools but ict gis ai ml based tools to gather information from the tool from the field so that our our studies and our research are are far more data driven and uh, and it can overcome a lot of otherwise challenging situations on actually getting data good authentic data from the field so be, to this effect we have developed several apps that we use extent extensively uh, in the field i won't go into the details of it um the third aspect the third pillar is knowledge dissemination so so you have the knowledge creation part of it and you have knowledge dissemination so whatever we have learned of course um from the communities that we work with whatever we have learned from our work in the communities we disseminate this knowledge not just in terms of workshops and conference but also in academic programs so we run a master's program in social work and we'll be starting a bachelor's program in social work and hopefully we'll extend that uh in the following years to other programs and certificate certificate programs and uh degree programs um the conferences workshops and seminars that we have done there have been several but what is unique about 
some of the ones that we are most proud of, which is I would say the one that we had as a capstone event in 2018, is that the women from the village actually were one of the main participants in the workshops and in the conferences. So they synthesized their learnings and they were the presenters. The researchers also, but also the women, the people that we work with and uh, bringing that conversation to the university from the village where we had brought academicians, but we also brought people from the United Nations, but also from the government of India. So we had all levels of representation in one room, all women talking to women. Uh, and it's probably one of the best experiences that we had. And I believe one of the UNESCO chairs also touched upon something very similar uh, yesterday. It was, I believe, uh, the UNESCO chair from uh, Kenya. Um, also knowledge dis dissemination in terms of our research contributions and our contributions to the a body of knowledge in women's empowerment. Several publications, reports have come over the last uh, three to four years. Uh, also several research papers. I think we have over uh, close to about 50 publications uh, that we have covered in terms of uh, uh, public health, vocational education, community-based uh, uh, research, development, uh, children and sustainable development and such. Uh, attended, uh, we presented our work uh, in a, a very wide range of conferences, uh, including the Pontifical Academy of Sciences, where we've been invited to speak about our work repeatedly, also at the United Nations and at UNESCO. Um, also, we have had uh, very fruitful collaborations with uh, several partner institutions. Uh, one of the ones, I think the strongest one that we have had, of course, also with UST and the University of Geneva. It's one of our very happy collaborations that we have, but also with Tel Aviv University from two aspects of them. One is the Department of Education that we work very strongly with, and the other one is the, the Department of Social Science and Policy. Uh, so we have conducted several workshops uh, with them, and we have several active projects with them. Uh, just uh, another uh, way we we increase this body of knowledge is that we have a weekly research colloquia where experts from various fields uh, talk about uh, their their work. And it's not, it doesn't follow any hard and fast rule. So we have speakers all the way from technology to behavioral sciences, to women's empowerment. But it, it, what it does is it just opens your mind in ways that you just do not even understand. And this is probably the most appreciated uh, of the, uh, and these talks are available online. So anybody who's interested can visit our website and uh, listen in. Uh, and it, it, it fosters a very rich conversation, a very deep conversation. Uh, we have uh, collaborations with several UNESCO chairs. Uh, we have an MOU with the UNESCO chair uh, in ICT and internationalization at Tel Aviv University, Dr. Rafi Nakmias. And through the, the MOU, we've had collaborative projects. Uh, one of them uh, is on clean water and sanitation to rural communities affected by the 2018 floods in Kerala that was funded by the Consulate of Israel in South India. We have an active collab. We work very closely with Dr. Colin uh, de la Higuera, who is the UNESCO chair chair of uh, Open Educational Resources at the University of Nantes, where we work together to have a symposium on gender and AI in collaboration with UNESCO in Paris and four other UNESCO shareholders. Uh, this was a very interesting uh, conversation. It was at the spark of a much larger conversation and a report on the role that uh, AI plays in uh, gender bias. Uh, we also have an active collaboration with uh, Dr. Gamba Della Car Carmine, he's the UNESCO Chair of Human Development and Culture of Peace, based in Italy. These are the active collaborations. Uh, we have, uh, these are active collaborations in the sense that these have resulted in something tangible, that they have either resulted in, in proposal submissions or they have uh, resulted in an event that we have hosted. We have other conversations going on. I've just picked a few. These are the international ones at the national level we have uh, very strong collaborations with dr rajesh tandon who is from priya who is in esco chair in cbr but and together we submitted this really uh, amazing proposal for migrant workers to meet the io which is like the planning co commission for the body it's the it's the body that has the 
the, the intellectual uh, debates and arguments and decides the policies of the country. We have also worked together on, on webinars for open science and invited talks. Um, we also had a wonderful invited talk uh, with Dr. Amrish Kala, who's the UNESCO Chair in Inclusive Museums and Sustainable Heritage Development. And of course, we have our second UNESCO Chair at Amritta, is Dr. Manisha. We do several projects together. Almost a lot of the projects in sustainable development definitely has a capacity building or a gender component. And we work very, very closely uh, with the UNESCO Chair in Experiential Learning. On Dr. Manisha, uh, on 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 all the village projects and and otherwise, uh, our UNESCO chair was given a second round in 2020 uh, uh, for the next four years. Uh, with UNESCO, we have uh, recently released a, a report on the status of uh, the role of uh, men in promoting gender equality in India, and uh, that's available and was mentioned by Dr. Uh, Mr. Eric Valt yesterday. And we have a, an active project that is uh, working with uh, paramilitary forces and training them on uh, mental health and gender sensitization. And we've trained over, uh, over 7,000 officers in mental health and in gender sensitization. Uh, we've also worked on several other projects, uh, uh, again, in rural agricultural thing with self-help groups creating. These are all based on our COVID projects. These are, these are from our learnings in COVID, uh, when we saw the status of women uh, affected by COVID, uh, that basically launched several projects. Uh, at uh, at uh, this at the at the UNESCO chair and the ones that I will specifically speak about is uh, the smart SHGs. The smart SHGs where we found out that uh, women who were in self help groups when the lockdowns happened, they did not have a way to interact. They didn't, they didn't have a way to meet uh, because they were not so familiar with technology. And so these physical meetings when they completely stalled, their functioning almost came to a complete standstill. So based on the challenges that uh, they had faced, of course, we had uh, a, a population of 250,000 women that we had access to to find out what was going wrong with them. We worked with them and we figured out what are the capacity that we need to build among the self-help groups to take them to the next level so that uh, lockdowns and such does not affect uh, the effective functioning of self-help groups. This is just one, one among uh, many projects that we are working on that are a direct outcome of the COVID pandemic. We have a dedicated field team. This is what we're really proud of. It shows our diversity. So it's not just the professors. It's not just the research students. Uh, uh, not not the the. Uh, it also in, involves uh, a very robust women's groups from all across India. The map on the right shows you the number of communities that we are working across the country. And our strategic goal, of course, for the future is, again, a strong focus on uh, the awesome framework. This is a systems thinking approach to uh, women's issues and women's vulnerabilities. So we don't look at uh, women's uh, vulnerability in a, in a, in a uh, siloed way, but we look at it as a very holistic thing because we don't really understand how different factors affect the empowerment because empowerment is not something that happens in one point in time it happens and it changes over time so how does do those shifts actually happen and so this is uh, our goal to to be able to map these systems and basically to ultimately model an intervention before we actually implement it how is it going to affect the empowerment of women as it is now as it is when it moves forward, and how does that ecosystem shift with women's empowerment? And uh, this is what we feel very passionately about. With this, I would like to say that we are really looking forward to this entire uh, effort to basically build uh, on several areas of collaboration, be it in economics or environment or in society, politics, culture, safety, security, education, skill development, health and sanitation. We feel very passionately that we have to have a holistic approach. So we're really interested in collaborating in all these areas. And we would like to collaborate with events like these, but also knowledge sharing of best practices and partnerships uh, with the other UNESCO chairs 
Uh, we have an upcoming conference in December. This is a full on academic conference that will actually have paper publications uh, that will be uh, eventually uh, that will be published. Uh, so we will send out to the entire UNESCO network inviting uh, papers, research papers from the entire UNESCO chair community, but also to uh, other, other uh, interested groups uh, that have been working on women's empowerment issues. Um, the, this is the timeline. I will share the details with you on the chat as well as uh, on the website so that uh, you would be able to submit something and work together. And if I'm, we welcome with open arms uh, to the UNESCO chairs to collaborate with us uh, on this particular uh, conference. Uh, it would be wonderful to work together on this. And with this, I conclude. Thank you so much. I hope I stuck to my time. And Almost. Thank you for thank you for <laughs> putting up with it. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Bavani. And let, let, let me first also um, I didn't mention them before, but we are very pleased to also have the UNESCO chairs from hello from Egypt, Haiti, Japan, Poland, and Kenya that joined us. So we're very pleased that we still have such a strong representation on day two. Uh, thank you for this introduction, Dr. Bavani. I, I'm aware of the, with this awesome framework. It sounds awesome, but it is also awesome in the sense, as you say yourself, it's a very holistic uh, approach towards vulnerabilities and towards women empowerment. I think uh, there's some good publications on this also. I would invite the audience really to have a closer look at this. I think your, your short presentation also illustrated the very soul of Amrita University that is compassion-driven research, training, and outreach. And I think what you shared with us it shows that it's not only doing work with academic rigor, but also with social impact. And I think that is really a key feature uh, of the work at Amrita for which I really congratulate you a lot. I know quite some universities, Amrita is unique. Uh, sometimes we call it a philanthropic university and it really stands out globally um, in these terms, but also in terms of its academic rigor. Um, as a reminder, yesterday was mentioned that in the various rankings, uh, Amrita has really known such a very strong progression being number one private university in India, but also very well noted on various aspects of the SDGs. So we have a few minutes left uh, for, for questions, uh, comments, and I would in particular like to invite the various UNESCO chairs maybe to, to raise questions and make additional comments um, before we move into the second part of today's uh, session. Are there any questions or comments? Please take the floor. Uh, there was a question from yesterday, and that was addressed to all the women chairs. And actually, I'm just uh, you know doing this on the behalf of the person who asked the question from the UNICEF. The question was for all climate direct, sorry, for all women empowerment directors, uh, chair directors. How is climate change agenda is affecting your work on women's empowerment? Does it require introducing new strategies and innovation to address the urgency that we face both locally and globally? This one question. Question two, what is the position of the chairs on the COVID-19 response? Considering the burden of care on women during the pandemic, how can we collectively lobby to make vaccines more rapidly and really available and accessible? This is actually for all women chairs. The floor is open for you to answer this question for the UNICEF. Anyone who would like to take one of these questions? I, yeah. Marlene, I think Marlene is raising her hand. Please, Marlene. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Marlene here from uh, Kenya. Very happy to be here. I think it's a great uh, meeting and thank you, uh, Dr. Rao, for excellent presentation. I think we can learn a lot from you and I hope we become all philanthropic universities one day. You have to come and talk to our management. <laughs> but anyway, trying to, um, to address the question about COVID, about ecology, about other things. Mm, what can we do as chairs? I think all of us are, uh, it plays, a, of course, COVID plays a role in our daily work. We have um, a kind of um, focused our research on gender and women. 
uh, in the in the COVID area. But maybe at the end of this um, conference, we could think about using this platform not only for a conference of two days, but really make it a platform for, from where we can raise our voices together. So that it's not one chair make a comment or, or two chairs, but if we group ourselves, I think we can be much stronger uh, to, to, to make statements about vaccine inequity, about the gender uh, implications, about so many things about climate. So maybe that is something that we could take up. Thank you. Point well taken. I think I will certainly repeat this as we conclude this today's session in terms of possible action items. And I think coming together to raise our voice um, and to strengthen our voice is, is a very positive idea. Gloria, you wanted to add something? Have to unmute, please. You have to unmute. Please unmute. Let's see if it works today. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I was so um, embarrassed yesterday because I couldn't. Uh, I, I have problems with the uh, with the computer. Uh, well, uh, first I want to congratulate uh, um, 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 my colleague from uh, Amrita University. Uh, it's a fantastic work. I mean, I think. Uh, I'm amazed uh, of the, the, the kind, the, the amount of things you are doing, and and particularly the orientation of your work. I mean, this this interconnect, interconnection, interaction between uh, creation of knowledge, uh, community uh, um, uh, empowerment, and I, I think it's uh, as very close to the way uh, we understand. Uh, gender uh, studies or gender research in, 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 uh, in our region, in, in, uh, in, in Latin America. So it's, it's, a, a, it's, a, it's not the usual academic work. It's a very, uh, it's high quality in knowledge, but for, for it has a purpose. It has the purpose to um, uh, increase the participation and, 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 uh, and, in, and, 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 uh, uh, um, uh, and, and uh, the life of, uh, um, um, of people in, in the communities. But I want to say just one thing. We just have ended uh, two research projects on uh, the youth, urban and rural uh, youth, uh, boys and girls, and, uh, and the impact of COVID. And uh, the impact in their lives, in their, in their uh, uh, life projects, and, uh, and, and, and I think that this is a particular um, population that we need to explore um, uh, much more. And what happens with, 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 with young people, both men, women, etc., cetera, but, uh, that are diverse, but uh, in different contexts. And, and particularly what was fantastic from those uh, two pieces of research was the projects. What are their projects for the post-pandemic uh, era? So I will be very pleased to share. Uh, they are in Spanish. I'm sorry, but uh, the results. But I will try to summarize uh, some of the results in English, so I can share with uh, some with, with the chairs involved in, in in this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Banda. Um, I have one final hand raised here, and that will be the final question or comment that we will take. Dr. Nirmal, please. The floor is yours. Was there a question on your side, Dr. Nirmal Kumar? Maybe not. Final opportunity for a short question or comment, or then we will move on to the next session of our day. We're running already five minutes late, it's not much, but we'll try to keep it all within the time. Okay. But oh, there is one final hand here from uh, Rose Michel. Please, Rose Michel. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, it's not a question. I would like to, to congratulate uh, Mrs. Bavani, <laughs> Bavani for her presentation. And I saw a lot of work. I'm so impressed. So my question is, uh, would it be possible to share or to send us by mail the invitation for the conference, please? Because I don't think we have the time to, to note the date. 
uh, of the deadlines. Thank you. Will that be possible, Dr. Bhavani? Yes, we will do it uh, as soon as possible, yes. Okay, I think we'll have a few words on the conference also in our concluding session. Yes. In terms of how that conference really can be a next milestone in our work together. Okay, so that brings us to the end of uh, session three of uh, meeting the, the, the chairs. As said, we will now break out in two rooms. There will be a room one and there will be a room two. And in each of these rooms, we'll have an enticing set of presentations from the various chairs, researchers from different parts of the world. So we will run two parallel streams. Um, so you have to choose either room one or two. And I think we'll show you how to do that <laughs> just shortly. Um, in each of these sessions, uh, there will be presentations, short presentations, followed by question and answers. Uh, and then the main key takeaway points from these discussions, as well as the emerging action items, because we want to be concrete, um, will be shared in the final session uh, that will take place after the parallel uh, sessions. Technically, um, I think is the team there um, to show us how to do this. Um, as said, there will be two rooms. One will be moderated by my distinguished uh, colleague, Meltem Alkoje. Uh, and the other one will be uh, with me. Um, technical team, is it already set up in terms of the rooms? Yes, you, uh, can I just interrupt for a second? Yes, uh, please. Uh, maybe you can just uh, give uh, quickly the overview of the presentation. I know we have distributed the agenda for everybody, but if just in case, uh, what are the presentation? What's in room one, what's in room two? That may be useful for our audience. Yes. We have uh, thank over you, 164, Tarek. thank you. Yeah, thank you, Tarek. Actually, the the, the, the the, the rooms are grouped around similar topics, even though the diversity amongst the presentations is quite uh, substantial. So I would say in room one, the first session has like a more slightly technical uh, twi twist to it. Um, the second session in room one um, also is more like on, on, uh, on the technical, but also the more holistic looks and approaches towards women empowerment. In room two with Dr. Meltem, uh, the first session um, is more about leadership. Um, how can we position you know, women also in stronger in, in, in leadership? And the final session, and again, there's a huge diversity in the various topics, but I would qualify the final session of room two uh, in relation to more education uh, related topics, uh, but also on, on, on the impact of COVID-19. So that leaves you the choice. And again, uh, it's, it's a bit mixed, uh, but these are the main themes that will be uh, covered in uh, the two rooms and the sessions there. Okay. Technically, is the technical team there? They, I think you wanted to share um, with us how we choose our groups. Yes, uh, please. Share your There's an echo. But please carry on. Sir, it's open. He's saying he's saying he's saying it's open. Uh, maybe Tarek can take us uh, through the. Uh, let me see whether I can do it. Uh, you, uh, Tarek, can you just share your screen here, please? Yes, I'll do. Just give me a second. I'll, I'll do this in a second. Uh, basically, there is a, actually on the chat there is a, there is a document that basically how we can use the either the the, the break down rooms. Also, I'll just display on the screen just for information. I can go quickly over that just in case you have any questions. So. Uh, so uh, basically right now you should see on the screen uh, this kind of like uh, square uh, bottom here it's called breakout room when you click on it everybody should have it when you click on it you will be actually offered actually two rooms one moderated by dr used uh, and then the other one moderated by dr meltem and you click on it and ask you which which one you would like to join if you say yes it will take you to the room and once you are in the room 
basically you can actually you know you can support stay to listen to all the presentations or if you want to switch you know you leave the room you can actually leave the room it will bring you to the main hall this is what we are in right now in the main session so you can actually go and watch this or you can switch between the room by clicking here and you can go to the other room so we have only two rooms so we have presentation running here and there and uh, we already have the agenda of the presentation so if you are interested in a certain topic you can free maneuver between one room to another or you can stay in a room for the two sessions we have in total 11 presentations so over two sessions per room so we will be meeting back around uh, what 7 p.m uh, in uh, india time which is around basically two hours and a half from now right right so, so if you have any technical difficulty please let us know and we'll be more than happy to help you somebody will be actually on the chat in the main hall just in case you have any problem you can just put your question and we can we can try to solve the problem there okay can i invite everyone then to to uh, join one of the groups by clicking as explain the group which you would like to attend i will be moving over to the my room right now and i will see you back at specific at 1925 Indian time, we will all convene again in the main hall. Okay, so see you in the rooms.